Hey guys, welcome back. So today I brought home two Generac 4000 XLs. These are both well-built machines, but they are getting up there in years. They were probably made sometime in the 90s, and neither one of these run. The one on the left is complete, but it is pretty rusted up and dirty. Clearly it was left outside and not taken care of, but it does have compression. So I'd say that one is a good candidate to come back. The one on the right looks to be much better cared for, but it is missing its carburetor and the airbox, not to mention there's no compression at all. So, I mean, ideally I would save both of these generators. I don't know if that's possible, but if I had to choose, I'd choose the one on the right based on the way it looks. So I do want to start with that one, figure out if this thing is terminally ill, in which case I'll use some of these parts to improve the appearance on the one on the left. Otherwise, if this one is good, if it comes back, then I want to make this one as complete as possible and then figure out what to do with the other one. So let me get you set up a little bit better and see if we can't figure out what's wrong with this one here. Yeah, it seems like it's the intake valve. I, I feel the pulse of air, but the valve's not closing. But when I put my hand on there, the engine does build compression. So let's get the valve cover off and take a look at those valves. Yikes. There's your problem. Not exactly sure how this happened, but the spring broke loose. You know, this cap on the top on the exhaust valve holds the spring down, but that, I don't seem to see it anywhere. And the valve itself, I don't think has fallen into the engine yet. So I'm going to rotate the engine to top dead center to kind of minimize the chance of that valve falling into the cylinder. It's hard to tell, but I think I might see the missing parts down, way down there. Let me try a magnet, see if I can't fish anything out. Yeah, I think we got pretty lucky on this one. Looks like all of it came out, and there's no keepers on this, so there shouldn't be anything more down there in the engine. We just need a new one of these, and then this thing should run. So I'm going to steal one from the other engine, and then we'll try firing this up.
Sounds good. Gonna set the valves both to five thousandths of an inch. Haven't looked up the spec on this yet, but five is usually a pretty safe number. Yeah, the exhaust is good. I don't need to touch that. It's right around five. Yeah, there's oil in there, but it is low, so I'm going to top that off before trying to start it. All right, let's give this a try. I'm going to try a little starting fluid in the intake. You know, without the carb, I'm not sure if it's going to like that, so we might have to pull the plug and put a little bit of fuel directly in. Nice. The engine runs and it makes power. So I'm going to take the carb off the other machine. We'll open it up, clean it out, assuming it's viable, and throw it on this one here and see what it can do. This thing's pretty oxidized and the throttle plate is rusted in place. So yeah, this thing could be full of water, which wouldn't be too good. Yeah, it's not looking too promising here.
Okay, not too bad. Yeah, the main jet is kind of stuck in there. So there's really not too much more to this carb other than the main jet in the emulsion tube. But I'm going to soak it for a while first before trying to get that out. Wow, I give this one hope. Shocking. The main jet's not clogged. So this, this, I mean, I haven't even put it in the ultrasonic or gone through it thoroughly, but this cleaned up, or I should say came apart, much easier than expected. I, I really didn't expect to get a lot of this stuff off, but, you know, that cleaned up well, that did, and so did the throat of the carb. I mean, there's still some dirt in there, but that'll clean off quite well. I think the only unknown here is the emulsion tube. It looks a little different than I normally see. I'll try to get that out, but I don't wanna don't wanna force it. It might need to be soaked a little bit. Yeah, I'm not gonna force it. So I just want to take a second to thank Steve. He sent me this. It is a tee ball, but it's perfect for all the little bits so you don't lose them in the bottom of the ultrasonic. And I have lost them before. Actually, there's been a couple times I went to reassemble and realized something was missing. Anyway, this will be a big help. Thank you. So despite the way it looks, it actually cleaned up pretty well. Most of the rust cleaned off. You know, there is some aluminum oxide on here, but, you know, overall, not too bad.
Yeah, that works. So I'm going to get this wheel kit foot and handle off of this one and move it on over to there.
Okay, now that we're mobile, we can roll this thing outside and give it a try. And before doing that, I did hook up the fuel line and turn on the valve about 10 minutes ago. Really just looking to see that the needle and seat were working, and it is. You know, there's no flooding that I can see. The carb's dry and the ground underneath as well. So I think we're good to go. Let's get this outside and start it up. All right, well, I flipped the idle button and it works, but I do need to set the idle speed there on the carb. Yeah, I think this carb isn't gonna do it. It is actually dripping a bit. So it is flooding over. It doesn't like running when the choke's off and even with it partially on, it's still not running great. Now the idle control does work and it slowed the engine down to about 55 Hertz. I adjusted that screw just a tiny bit and it went right down to about 30 with about a quarter turn. So. I'd say the jetting is a bit clogged. The needle's not working right, so I'm gonna roll the dice. I'm gonna try a clone carb and see if that improves things at all. All right, the carb's been ordered, but this thing's in desperate need of an oil change. So I'm gonna get that changed now while it's hot.
Okay, the new clone arrived today. And I've got to say, this one feels substantial. Usually the clones are a bit lighter, but this one, not so much. Anyway, you've already seen how to remove and install the carb, so I'm going to cut it here, and I'll turn it back on outside for the test. Okay, let's see if this clone is any good. That sounds really good. Okay, I'm happy to report that this clone carb works very well, both at high speed and low speed. It's running the engine really good. So this thing's pretty much a wrap. I guess one thing I want to mention is that, you know, people always ask me what generators do I recommend? And the answer is usually that all generators sold today are pretty much the same. They all have a Honda clone engine with an oil switch. This one is a standout. You know, it actually has an oil filter, and you won't see that on any 4,000 watt generator made today. And that's going to make this thing last a long time. You know, it also has an AVR and the idle down control. So the whole Generec XL series is a very good series generator. I think the only issue is they're getting a bit up there in years, and parts are becoming more difficult to find for this, which brings me to what to do about the other generator. I had assumed I could just order a new valve spring retainer to replace the one that we stole. And unfortunately, that part is obsolete. But there is hope. Generec does make a valve kit, which comes with valves, springs, and a new, newly designed retainer, which I think they did on purpose because they knew there was a problem with that design. So I've already gone ahead and ordered that. I am going to do a separate video on that and hopefully bring back the other one to good health. So I hope this video helps someone. Thanks for watching.